the, the car is very, very fast. Um, and not even like very fast for a two wheel drive. It's very fast period, in my opinion, at least. 100 to 150, uh, I did a 159, which was uh, pretty good. What's up, TRC fans? Don't miss our annual Street Kings event at Bradenton Motorsports Park on December 10th. Join the TRC team for an action-packed day of drag racing, roll racing, and a car show. We'll see you out there.
Hey guys, my name is Aaron with Nth Moto out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're here at uh, Gainesville Raceway in Gainesville, Florida for FL2K22 with the, uh, a whole plethora of Vipers around us here for both the roll race and drag race. Uh, two of the cars that we brought with us, uh, first up which would be Kratos, which most of you guys have probably seen at this point in time. Hopefully you have been paying attention to uh, TRC's channel where there's been a couple features on it. Um, this was the defending outlaw roll race class champion from last year. In competition, we ran a best of 208 miles an hour and that was at Bradenton. It did run at Texas 2K. Uh, in March, uh, it was the number one qualifier at that roll race event, which was a pretty unheard of thing to have happen for a, uh, a two wheel drive platform at that point in time. So we went 225 out there. If you guys saw that, it uh, didn't end quite the way that we had wanted to and uh, um, ended up tagging the wall. We got it all back together, prettied up, looks good again, ready to play. And so we brought it down to Florida 2K for the roll race to try and defend our title. Uh, Kratos, if, if you're unfamiliar, that is uh, the, the ACR Extreme here. It's a 2016 car. Uh, it is a nine liter engine combination. Uh, OEM block, OEM heads, an 88 millimeter turbo combination that we run on this one, ATI Turbo 400. Uh, that actually has really full level integration into the car, which is really cool. Automated lockup converter, it does it when you're cruising around. It is a legitimate six second car. It's been 690 at 210 miles an hour in the quarter mile. It's the, the world's only Gen 5 that's been in the sixes. Our, our team as a whole prides ourselves so much on the uh, construction of the car, of the assembly technique and, and really as much as it is race car tech, making it as OE-like as what we can possibly do. Um, the cruise control works in it still, 18-speaker um, sound system, air conditioning. Uh, the tech guys about had a heart attack when I rolled on the scales um, to bring in because with me in it, it was 4,130 pounds, um, which is really, really absurd. but uh, it, it, it does well, uh, even at that. So before Florida 2K21, it made 33.06 or something like that. Um, I, but truthfully, I, I, we've dynoed it since then, but never had a real need to try to go up in that level. Uh, that should right now, that would probably be somewhere between 39 to 41 pounds of boost, somewhere in there probably. The 205 run was about 36 um, on the high end. Uh, and we never really had the opportunity to try to go higher than that since our focus was just kind of chopping at the ET. I mean, throwing power at it is easy. Like that's keystrokes, right? Like you press the buttons on the laptop and if the, the car has the capability in it to do it. Um, but those are minor, minor, minor changes to the overall race outcome for uh, higher, um, exponentially higher stress levels on the car itself. So, um, that kind of ties into why this particular race we're really fond of as far as the roll race formats because I think this is plenty of length. I mean, you had you had several cars that went over 200 miles an hour and that's just in one year progression. Last year, this same event, only two cars, period, broke 200 mile, miles per hour, uh, this being one of them and then Ossier's was the other. Uh, this time you had three, I think there were another, maybe a couple, maybe they were knocking on the door, like it's so, it's plenty of distance to go plenty fast, in my opinion, at least. So you don't really need to be going a lot farther. It's been 210 in the quarter. Uh, the car behind me, Juggernaut, has uh, been 220 um, at 3,930 pounds with him in it. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's real power, like it's really making it, and it does it in a really, really nice way. Uh, our billet intake manifold, billet air to water intercooler system, uh, forge line wheels uh, up front. It's got a really unique suspension combination all around on this car to try to let us do both drag and roll stuff really effectively. So this car is still what I would call fairly young. Uh, you know, of real race outings, it's only had two. It was Florida 2K and then uh, Texas 2K in the spring. And uh, so this would really be its third outing, so to speak, um, at a race event. We're really starting to kind of, I think, dig into its its real capabilities uh, from the onset of the build. We, we were fortunate and it came out of the gate strong and was doing really well. It's continued to do so, but in that we've been progressing in how quick the car is because these events, while they focus on the mile per hour, being that, that is the, uh, that's how you qualify here, um, that's what you fixate on from a number standpoint, it is a 
ET race. So it really does come down to how quick can you get from point A to point B. Uh, that is where the challenge lies for us on the two wheel drive side of things to compete with the very, very, very fast all wheel drive cars that are out there nowadays. I think uh, it went a two, 204 miles an hour in our first qualifying run, came around and it ended up going 205. That's where we ended in the qualifying and we, we qualified number two. Um, we were bested by, uh, I think, Ossier's GTR went 207, and that's a very, very, very fast car. But uh, we felt good about the, that A to B capability of what we could do, even though it was really kind of on the edge of what the car wanted to take on the low speed traction side of things. But that's why we're here. It's why we don't just race on draggies um, and compare it like it's, it's part of the fun. If, if you weren't here for the competition aspect, that is, I don't know, for us, that's a big part of it. On the topic of draggy, the car is very, very fast. Um, and not even like very fast for a two wheel drive. It's very fast period, in my opinion, at least. 100 to 150, uh, I did a 159, which was uh, pretty good. Florida 2K21, when it ran a 203 pass as a mile per hour recognition, it was a 4.30 on that um, 100 to 200 metric. 205, that doesn't sound like a lot of speed increase, right? But in a metric, it went 3.96. So it was tremendously quicker. I mean, that amount of ET in that overall short of a time, that percentage function is a really big deal. And that's uh, what we're continuing to try to do on all of our cars at these types of events is keep looking at those metrics and shortening that up just like drag racing. It's the roll race stuff. I know there's like this internet battle between dig guys and roll guys. And I, it's so comical to me because they're, they're one and the same. It's just a different starting format. And it's actually, they have their own unique set of challenges, which if you're into that kind of thing, it's, it's, it's an enjoyable thing. It really tweaks your brain a little bit to figure out how can we make this chassis that's already in motion act the way that we want it to, similar to maybe what we're trying to do, but from a, a dead stop on a drag layout. So it, uh, it challenges your brain in a different way, and, and that's a lot of fun for us as a team to kind of figure those things out. Uh, 396 was a really, really, really fast one, uh, 100 to 200, um, and, it, and it did quite a few of those, 159, 160, 161, uh, 396, 398, 40, kind of stuff like that. So uh, basically that's my really kind way of saying, like as we keep getting this quicker and quicker down low, good luck, um, but I'll just, <laughs> Maybe that's a little too brash, but we're pretty proud of it. It's it's a, it's it's really a fantastic car, um, and uh, and we can't thank Don enough for wanting to let us really kind of keep cutting loose and keep playing with it and keep evolving it um, from its original format. It ended up uh, working its way into the semifinals. Um, had a good couple races on the way there. Unfortunately, one of the cars that we had to race was one of our own. Ended up having to knock out one of our other customer cars there, unfortunately, but. Um, yeah, made it in the semifinals. Uh, ended up running uh, Marcel Duran, really nice gentleman. Very, very, very serious, very, very fast GTR. And uh, we had a really great leave. Um, I, I messed up, uh, his driver error uh, instance, which that's part of the game, right? Um, by a short shift in the car, which really kind of upset the whole timing of the, of the chassis and what we were trying to accomplish there. Got into a big wheel spin event. Um, after that, which then made it like an, a, an abort mission kind of thing, unfortunately. So, which tears you up as a, as a competitor when you're, when you're watching the guy drive away and there's nothing you can do about it. And yet you, you just, there is nothing you can do. Like the, the, the moment is over. Um, but Marcel was a really nice gentleman. Uh, I spoke to him afterwards and uh, he ended up winning in the finals. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy for that. Those, uh, both, both of those two GTRs that were left there, they were very, very, very serious cars. Um, very, very fast cars. So kudos to them. They did very well. Uh, and we'll look forward to kind of going toe to toe with those guys um, at the next one, whenever that is. A couple of the other Gen 5s that we had com here competing with us uh, in the roll race was uh, Josh and Billy's TA 2.0. Um, very, very cool car from a historic aspect. I actually, just looking over at it right now is neat because that was the very first Gen 5 that Nth Moto ever turboed. Um, we did that for uh, customer Danny Fox back in the day. So that was the first car to break 200 in the half mile of, or for the generation five Vipers. That was really, really cool. Um, it went 206 with a six speed back then. That was really kind of a heck of a feat at that point in time. At some point that car traded hands and then uh, 
uh, it had an accident and went off and was damaged and it ended up in auction and uh, Josh and Billy bought it prior to ever talking to us. And then we had this phone conversation of, hey, we bought this car that is damaged and um, nice to meet you. We'll probably be working together. <laughs> and uh, They did an awesome job. They got the whole thing put back together really beautifully and, um, and then sent it over to us to deal with mechanically um, for the damages that it had incurred in the accident. And uh, at the same time, they chose to do some modernization and updates to the car because uh, if you look at that under the hood right now, it looks extremely, extremely similar to what we would call our Delta Series uh, builds now. And we have pride in that because from a company engineering aspect, that was the first, the prototype, and yet the intercooler is the same, uh, the, the hot side is the same. That still has the same turbos on it that went on it on the original build back in 2015, I think that was. Um, it's been modernized with a 660 sequential trans, uh, billet intake, updated fuel system. Um, it has, uh, we had to go into the motor um, to make sure that was all okay. Uh, and so it got some updated pieces there, but it's a, it's a really simple combo, if you want to call it that way, stock crank, um, uh, wet sump oil system still. Uh, it's geared pretty aggressively and Josh just did a heck of a job driving it. And uh, that thing punched way above its belt. I mean, that all in, that thing makes like upper 1700 wheel and it went 185, which was kind of mind boggling actually. Um, and, uh, and it did it well, 181, 182, 185. Just from a history aspect, that's a really cool piece to see out here. And uh, the, uh, Josh did such a phenomenal job piloting it and just a great group of guys that we've really grown close with in this whole uh, chapter of that car's life as, as storied as what that is. Unfortunately, he had to race on uh, another Turbo Viper, not one of our cars here. Um, so the two runs that he did get were both against Vipers, one against, uh, I believe, Zach, Zach Friedman's car prior. <laughs> And he made it through that round and then he had to go up against Kratos, which um, that didn't go that well for him, unfortunately, but it's, you know, um, that's okay. Uh, another car we had with us was uh, Jordan Martin's uh, uh, GTS, a uh, beautiful car, the launch edition, blue, white stripe, converted with ACR style arrow. Um, you guys as viewers may know him from some of his well-publicized uh, Lambo drag car stuff, Dragbo with AMS um, and, uh, and then his Performante which is out here racing in the DCT Extreme class. I think it went 750 at 194 and that, it's amazing. Um, so cool to see him get to transition between platforms as something so automated and dialed and, and uh, very high tech layout and then hop into the uh, very analog old school Viper experience, but with a little Nth Moto spice to it. So that's a, a, a neat car. It's a, a Xena series build, nine liter stroker, um, billet intake, M190, 660 sequential. Uh, a lot of cool parts to that. He ended up running uh, towards the end of a blistering 6130 out there for a rear wheel drive car. It went to a 247 um, and uh, that was fantastic. Uh, he ended up going 191 and change as we were kind of working up on the car. <laughs> Unfortunately, he ended up having a, a mechanical issue that knocked him out. Um, but uh, I think that one's going to be, it's going to be a pretty special car to see continue to evolve along the way. Uh, directly behind me is Juggernaut. Um, a very cool car, very close to our hearts, obviously. It is the currently the world's quickest and fastest Viper, um, period, no asterisks, generation, suspension, whatever. Uh, it has been 668 at 220. <laughs>
2001 Viper chassis. It is a Gen 5 Viper uh, driveline at that point in time. A similar story, as I said, to Kratos, stock block, stock heads. It's a nine liter stroker combination in there, Garrett 88s, ATI, TH400, lockup, Motec M190. Uh, hydraulic roller cam still, um, nothing too fancy there. They both run on one ethanol R for fuel. Uh, so they're not methanol cars. Um, they're actually full flex fuel cars if they have to be, but at this event, we're running on one ethanol R fuel, a full IRS car still, um, which uh, allows us to enter that car into the street car class. Um, it's, it's very portly for what it's doing. Um, he was 3930 across the scales in tech. Um, and uh, so far we are qualified number two with that car in the streetcar shootout class in the top tier of that um, at a 685 at 215. And being such a heavy car, we kind of only have one mode of attack out of the hole because we got to use some force to get it moving. And um, we've run into a little bit of struggles with that uh, this weekend, just trying to, with the hot track temperature and that surface to try to get it to stay stuck right at the hit on the line or just a little bit out. But we've managed pretty well so far. Um, you know, I think our our first, we did a, a test run at 7-Eleven and then we went a 690, 696 and then a 685. Ultimately, we really hope to see this car get to where when all the stars align that it might go for that overall quickest IRS run, which um, to my knowledge, I believe is a 657 um, from Mark Carlisle's Corvette, which was long, long, long time ago. And that was amazing that he did that at that point. But um, we, can't, we think we could do that, um, even with where we are for weight and uh, what we've been learning with the car and what kind of power we have on tap if we really want to try to lean into it. Um, we think it is possible to get there. Um.